God bless you guys. Welcome, everybody. My name is Pete Stevens. I'm so glad to be here. Um, quiet in the hallway, sir. Kidding. Um, welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center. Welcome, YouTubers. Uh, we're still up and running strong. Uh, we're not going to be canceled out because we prayed a miracle and we believe it's not going to happen. So the YouTube channel will not be back down again in Jesus' name. And we're believing, we're trusting in God because he's good like that. Um, okay, so first I got a few deliverance or messages for you. The Arizona deliverance, uh, men's deliverance call, or it's steps of deliverance, men and women. So I was reading the thing. It's every Wednesday night. That thing is just rocking. I strongly encourage you to jump on there. Um, get your healing, get your deliverance. That's on Wednesday night. Um, we also have the offering boxes on the back doors. If you want to kick down, we appreciate that. Those of you on YouTube sending money for the lights and stuff, we do appreciate that. Nobody makes any money here. We thank you so much. Um, also, on uh, Julie's seminars on the 19th of November, um, come check that out. That will be in here, I think, at noon, right, Kelly? I think it's noon. And then this Saturday... Mike's training class in the small, deliverance training class is in the small sanctuary. Come check that out so you can learn how to do deliverance and you can help people around you because deliverance is the children's bread and it's the one thing we need to learn. We need to learn the word of God. We need to learn how to pray. We need to learn how to cast out devils. It's important because they hinder us from walking in holiness. They ruin our lives. They come to kill, steal, and destroy. So Saturday, noon, small sanctuary. Come check it out. You're going to dig it. Mike's a great teacher. It's always fun. You can ask questions, bring your notepads. Um, so so good to see all of you here. Um, one more thing. I got a scripture here for us to encourage us just a little bit. Um, it's in the book of Mark sure you guys have all heard it. Mark 16. I'm going to read it to you because this is what's going to go down tonight, okay? It's Mark 16. I'm going to read all the way through, okay? Mark 16, uh, chapter, or chapter 16, verse 16. It says, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Okay, verse 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. Okay? In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So these things are going to happen tonight because we believe. I know I believe. I know Rick believes. I know the ministry team believes. I know you guys believe. We all believe, right? Do we believe? Let's hear a big amen like we mean it. Amen. We believe. All right. We believe in Jesus Christ. He's the healer. He's going to heal your bodies. He's going to heal your mind tonight. The devils are going to come out in Jesus' name. They're going to come. The devils are nothing. You have the Holy Ghost. They're going to come flying out of you. Whatever you struggle with, run up to the altar call, confess it, they'll go. I'm going to pray. Rick's going to come up and preach. And then it's going to happen in Jesus' name. So, Father, I laid it all out there. You're going to come do the work. You're a good God. We thank you so much for bringing everybody here tonight. We thank you for your Holy Spirit already moving on the people. Thank you so much. Lord, we all just want to be healed. We all want to draw closer to you. We all want more tonight. Lord, we want more of you in our hearts, more of you in our minds, more of you, Lord. We want the devils to go. We want our bodies healed, and we're asking you to come and do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
Testing, 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 testing. We crank that AC a little bit, Pete. Testing, testing, testing. Is this on? Or I'm on? Excellent. Well, getting demons out isn't so hard. It's getting the people to keep your demons out is the hard part. That's what we struggle here. You don't understand. A demon is vicious. Demons are vicious. They owned people. They controlled people's lives. They control America. They control the world. And when they start being evicted, oh, just like they mimic the kingdom of God and God says, zeal for my house consumes me, they got some passion about their house. And it says when a demon comes out of a man, he's walking about dry places, can't find any rest. He says, I'll return to my house. He has some passion about his assignment. So these demons just come right back in. You, you can't get over on the devil. Are you kidding me? You can't get over on the devil. You, you, you got to walk right. You, you, you got to walk with Jesus Christ. You got to have power and authority. Oh, I'm going to explain it to you. There's, you can't just have power. You got to have power and authority. This thing is, uh, this thing is uh, getting strange. I don't understand. I went to this church trying to hear something. All they did was blast this music. I couldn't take it. I'm not that old. I'm 53 years old. They were just blasting it at us. Like, what are you trying to do? What, what, what are you going to get closer to God because you're blasting it like a rock concert? I couldn't even think. Dude, that, I started thinking, man, don't you understand? In the Bible, they didn't have any amplification systems. You were supposed to lift up a joyful noise. You were supposed to make some sounds of praise, not blast someone out for Jesus. And I thought I was singing along, and then it kind of got quieter, and I had my hoarse voice. And I was like, oh, I would have adjusted my voice if I could have heard my voice. You couldn't even hear yourself. I don't know. I, I want to just stick to the basics so you can make it. I'm going to stick to the basics so you can make it. You need Holy Spirit power, and you need authority. There's, a, there's, there's two separate things. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. But Jesus shows you, no servant's above his master. Once you get the power, oh, you feel good when you get the power. You feel good, but the power has to be tested. you got to be tested. So the minute he received the Holy Spirit, he was driven out into the wilderness to be tempted 40 days and 40 nights by the devil. He was driven out by the Holy Spirit so that he could be tested. Then when he defeated the devil, was standing on the word of God in every accusation, every temptation. Then he came back, and the authority was in operation. You, you got the power when you have the Holy Spirit, but there's a difference between power and authority. You got to, power is the ability to act and the capacity in doing and accomplish something. But the authority now, that's delegated. And you have to be smart now. I had to go over it. We don't have any authority. Does it make sense that you would have authority over demons in Washington? Do you, would it make any sense that you would have authority over demons that are running pornography in Maricopa County when you can't even get your own life right? You can't even fulfill your calling as a disciple? You wouldn't have that type of authority. The people in Maricopa County want the porn. If you shut the porn down tonight, you'd have probably hundreds of rapes. These guys would just go into beast mode with their demons because they couldn't get their fill. They'd send them out on the street. You'd start popping up Jeffrey Dahmers everywhere because the people are crying out for sin. They want sin. So you have authority over your own body. You have authority over your children. You have authority over the church in which God gave you the ministry. Everything else we pray. Jesus said, my father's house will be a house of prayer. He didn't say it'd be a house of prayer and a bunch of binding and loosing and commanding and using the authority. It doesn't say that. If Jesus went up to the, uh, to the Mount of Olives, he went into prayer for hours, praying to the Father. The Lord takes care of these demons up there. He, they can only go so far. We know that with Job. He said, yeah, I seen Job, but I gave up on him. I couldn't get to him. You got a hedge of protection around him. And he says, hey, you take that hedge down, I'll get him to curse you to his face like everybody else I get my hands on. He said, okay, you just can't kill him. Don't touch his body first. Then it was, you can't kill him. So Satan and his principalities and powers 
God's going to control them and tell them how far they can go. Everybody would be a Jeffrey Dahmer making gay homosexual soup and eating them. I don't know, I guess you haven't watched the Netflix series. I don't advise you watching it either. I watched it in 1990 when it was happening. He was cutting up homosexual prostitutes and eating them. He was frying them up on his pan. Well, if there wasn't any restraints, the whole world would go into this lawlessness, and it's about to be pulled back. When the river Euphrates is dried up, these demons come up out of the Euphrates River. And we're dealing with what we're dealing with now. You better be a praying person. You better be praying that God would hide you under, under his shadow, under his, under his wings, under his arm. You got to pray. And then you got to use the power and the authority which he gives you over your life, over your children. I was able to get my daughter delivered first. She was five. I was able to get my son delivered at 10 fast. But my son that was 14 was harder. Because now he was already to the age of accountability now. He had to fight back on his own. I had to go over the word of God. I had to keep going. It wasn't as easy. My two kids that, are, that got deliverance, they live a different life than my son. This like the devil got taken out and they weren't tempted. My daughter was 17 until she got a phone. She only had a phone that could text. She doesn't do social media. She's never been on a date. My one son's had one girlfriend. He's looking for a wife. I said, don't play around. Don't get involved with women because they look good, smell good, or funny, and it'll give you a boost to your ego, and all your boys will be impressed. Don't go down that road. It's a dead end and a waste of time. You see someone who loves God, you got to see it, and then you got to see them under temptation. You got to see them under some duress and know what's truly in them and to see if they're willing to, to listen because you're looking for a help mate. You're not looking for a women's lived out woman that wants to be the alpha female and cause hell in your life. There's an order that a man shall be the spiritual leader of his household. Oh, if you want a good life, you, you, you'll operate with biblical context. I know sometimes you're married and your husband's he's out there in left field. You got to do what you got to do and rally the troops and take care of the family. But that's not the order you go into, the order of God. And so... He gives us power in Luke 10, 19. In Luke 10, 19, it says, Behold, I give you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions. I give you power over the enemy. Those are two different things. And then he says, Nothing by no means will harm you. If what? If you're using your power under the delegated authority in which God gave you. If you could just sit around and bind and loose demons, Maricopa County would be swept clean. And there was this guy, this Russian deliverance minister, and he had this old school guy on there. And the old school guy was given all these accounts that he says, hey, if I'm going through deliverance in three hours and they just keep roaring and roaring out, I said, hey, this person's got an open door. He said 99% is always unforgiveness with unforgiveness towards somebody, with being mad at God. Demons go out, coughing, hacking, puking, and they go right back in some spiritual door. So you can't open doors to demons. But this person, these occasions, didn't have those doors open. And he would go to the second thing. Are you battling demons in the second heaven? And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, I got power and authority over all demons. No, you don't. If you did, you'd be able to clean up Melrose Street right there, go down there on a Saturday night, and it's, a, it's not pretty. You would be able to go down there and clean it up. You'd at least be able to drop the population in half by 10%. You'd go back and forth every weekend. Let's see you do it. But you don't have authority over that. That's free will. God does not violate free will. He gives everybody free will. It's a spiritual law. So I can't cast out a spirits out of somebody who doesn't want their spirits cast out. I can't go call up Mother Cleo from 1900 Psychic and start binding her demons. She's making money. She likes those demons. You go down here to the witches uh, convention down here at Veterans Memorial Coliseum, and they're going to either get you arrested or scratch your face. You're not going to get the demons out. You don't have authority over those demons. you got authority over yours. So you got to work on yourself. Everybody wants their ministry. Everybody wants to advance. Everybody wants to go out and help somebody, get somebody healed. But you first got to work on yourself. You can do things along the way. The woman with the issue or, or the, the woman at the well, she said, hey, she became an evangelist. Come out and see a man that prophesied, told me every single thing I ever did. And so 
the, the demoniac at the Gadarenes, he said, hey, I want to follow you. He said, no, you stay here and you testify to this community, to your family, the wonderful works which God did for you. So along this process of growing in godliness and growing in faith and in knowledge, hey, there's some fruits along the way. I led someone to the Lord. The first time I led a stranger to the Lord, I cussed the whole airport out because they wouldn't let me on with these bunk tickets that I always used to fly on. And it was a red-eye flight, and I didn't want to go get a hotel. Then I didn't want to pay 40 for the cab, so I walked down 25 cabs till someone would take me for 20 bucks, half the price, and jump the line. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit falls on me. I'm, I'm not too smart. I'm thinking, he's asking me all these spiritual questions, and I got all the answers. I can't believe I can recall all this stuff. I said, man, my memory's not that good. At that point, I'm still smoking weed. But I didn't realize it until after he got saved that the Holy Spirit would teach you and remind you of everything that he spoke. That's what he was doing. And then he was showing me, hey, this can be a part of your life. And I, I walked away. I literally said, I can't believe this dude just got saved. This guy's hugging me. He's crying. Now I'm greedy, and I'm giving him more money. Like, hey, that's not right. I talked you down. Take this money. He doesn't want to take it. I walk away, and I said, I can't believe that happened. And God said, imagine what I could do if you'll just get out of the way. I was in the way. I was self-serving. I was self-sufficient. I was motivated by everything that I had came up in my old life. Well, God has to take you through this process of sanctification where he puts new desires and new hopes in you. He begins to renew your mind. And as he's renewing your mind, you see that you need power to do what you're called to do. But he says this. So you get the power in Luke 10, 19. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 20, it says this. The kingdom of God is not in word, but it's in power. So you're going to preach the word, but once you preach the word, then it gives the opportunity for God to come and back it up. And I've been to many churches, and sometimes they start talking power, but it doesn't happen. So there's either doubt, there's either fear, there's some unbelief in there, and that devil ain't you. You're not, you haven't dealt with the devil already. You got to deal with the devil yourself before you deliver somebody. You got to overcome doubt. You got to overcome fear. You got to overcome insecurity. What helps you overcome doubt, fear, and insecurity? The Word of God. The Word of God is eternal. It's a sword. It pierces to the soul, the joints, and the marrow. It judges the, the thoughts and the attitude of the heart. You, you got to let Him have His way. So in Ephesians chapter 6, He says this He said, Finally, be strong, what? In the Lord. And in his mighty power. So your strength is in his word. And your strength is in his power. So when you start walking around like you got power, now the devil's got you tricked. I'm going to go into that. I'm going to talk about the five I am's of Satan or the, the I wills that he said in Ezekiel. I'm going to expose that motivation because let me tell you, the devil's been through it. He was kicked out of heaven. So he knows how to rob somebody of their authority and their destiny because he robbed himself. So he's an expert at it. So we got to be strong in the Lord. We got to be strong in his mighty power. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 20, he talks about there's a cup of the Lord. There's a cup of demons. There's a table of the Lord and there's a table of demons. And you can't be double dipping. It's not going to work. You can't serve two masters. You can't get Holy Spirit power and then go watch porn. You're going to lose your power. You're going to lose authority. The Bible says you become a slave to the one that you yield yourself out. You had to yield down. You had to violate your conscience. You had to ride through your conviction, and you had to put triple X on that keypad. So now he begins to have his way with you. Why? Because you sat down and you had surrender to him. So you got to come off that table. That was the way it used to work when you walked aimlessly, and that's described in Ephesians 2.2. He says, where in the past you walked according to the course of this world, this world will send you a course. And you'll start following and mimicking somebody else in whom you seem to have fun or had success. You begin to follow in their paths or some advice from somebody that was worldly. And it says, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. So the spirit begins to work inside you when you map out a course from something you saw in the world and you desired it, you saw it on TV, you saw it in school, you saw it in the neighborhood, you saw it in a family member, then a spirit comes to give you the power to walk according to that, and it's the prince of the power of the air. So when you're walking under that, you're drinking off his cup and you're eating off his table. In Romans chapter 6 and 12, he says, Therefore, don't let sin reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it in its lust, and do not present your members 
as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead. You have to have an understanding. When Jesus Christ gave you life, you were rescued off the auction block of slavery. Your destination was hell. You deserved hell. But Jesus Christ came and intercepted and said, I will take that one. I will take that one as my own. And he calls you out. And if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that he shed his blood on the cross, was dead, and resurrected on the third day, he said you will be saved. And so once you're saved, now your body is an instrument for God. What can I do for you? It's not about me trying to build this 401K. It's not about me trying to have 19 kids and counting. It's not about building bigger barns. It's not about glorifying myself. It's my body's an instrument. You gave me hands and feet. You gave me a mouth. And I'm to be joined together with the body of Christ. And it fits together where each one would encourage one another. Each one was to esteem each other better than himself. And when you get into the body of Christ and begin to go into operation, hey, you see God begin to move. He begins to give vision. He begins to speak through prophets. He begins to lay the course according to Scripture. Then when you begin to step out in faith on your own, then you begin to step out in faith as a church body, you begin to see miracles. But if you just go around doing things, it's not going to work. This guy called me. He's down in Mexico. He goes, hey, man, give me some Scriptures. We went to this church, and they had this holy water. And they made this holy water, and they gave it out in these little vials, and they said, drink this water, and you're going to be healed. And I said, that ain't nowhere in Scripture. I said, the only thing in Scripture is there's a washing of the old man in the water, a symbology that your old man dies, and the new man comes up out of the water. The Bible says if any one of you is sick, he calls upon the elders. And the elders will pray a prayer of faith, and if they have sinned, their sins will be forgiven, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick. It says, Jesus is by his stripes, we are healed. It doesn't say anything about no holy water. And when I'm telling him, there's a phone cut out like six times because his wife was believing this stuff. What's happening? The church is beginning to make merchandise out of people. Why in the world would a guy want to dance around and spin like, a, like the Commodores? Why, why would someone want to scream with their voice you know, it was a good sounding voice. Why would you want to do that to draw people to Jesus Christ? I, I was like, wow, are they confused with some kind of scriptures? The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. When David played the harp, I mean, that thing's got to be pretty calm sounding. He comes down and inhabits and fills this house because it's a place of worship. It's so powerful that Saul's demons have to leave. I said, what do you think you're going to drive these demons out with loud noises? It, God is the author of perfection, not confusion. What is this confusion? When did the worshipers need to be dancers? It's not like a dance. You know, I've seen jailbirds do some dancing for God. And it's like they knew they were going to hell. And it's not a pretty dance. And it always ends with someone crying down. Not a little two-step you worked on on the Wednesday night band night. That's not going to get anybody healed. That's not going to get anybody delivered. That's not going to usher me into the kingdom of heaven. And then the guest speaker couldn't make it. An hour and a half, it was a dud. They talked about deliverance. I didn't see one person get delivered. It was packed. 900 people, 700 people. You had to park way in the back lot just because one man doesn't show up. And that man, I first saw that man preach there eight years ago. Before he was really doing deliverance, he talked that he had done some deliverance, but that wasn't his main thing. His main thing was baptism of the Holy Spirit at that point. So that pastor said, we're good friends. But he never got the instruction and he never paid the price. There's a price if you want to fight the devil. Because he ain't going to leave if you have compromise. He ain't going to leave if you got sin. He ain't going to leave if you're double-minded. He ain't going to leave if he threw confusion on you and you allow that confusion to reign in your mind. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Whew. Authority. Authority is the power and the right to give orders, to make decisions, to enforce obedience. Oh, you got to enforce it. Hey, there was times Jesus said they didn't come out right away. He had to draw him out a little more. He didn't come out the minute he told him to come out. If they're going to test Jesus, sometimes they're going to test you. He says this in Mark chapter 127, and they were all amazed in so much they questioned among themselves, what is this? What new doctrine is this? With authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. They had never seen nothing like that. They had, they had seen the healings. 
They had the, was it the pool of Shalom where the angels came and fanned the water and the first one in got healed? They had seen healings. It was common with the Jews. God was leaving a remnant. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I haven't changed. It's you that changed. He was always willing to heal them. Those Jews that had leprosy understood. He said, go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift in accordance with the miracle that you just received. They knew what they were supposed to do when they received the healing. They were trained by the Pharisees, by a Sadducee. They were trained by a rabbi. They knew the word of God. And now Jesus is commanding spirits, and they say, we haven't seen anything like this. With authority, he commands unclean spirits to come out. Mark chapter 3 and 14, he says this, now he ordained the twelve. He sends the twelve out, and he gave them, and he said that they might send them forth to preach. He said that they would have power now to heal the sick and to cast out devils. So they got power, but the power was more that came upon the disciples at this point because Christ had not been crucified. He had not been yet resurrected from the dead, so the Holy Spirit wasn't yet poured out. So it was more like the power that came upon uh, all the prophets in the Old Testament. So they were operating in power, but they didn't quite understand it. We know that Peter fully didn't understand it. He denied Christ three times the night before he was crucified. So they had some confusion. They, they were operating in the power, but it was for a delegated time. First he sent him out with the 12, then he sent him out with the 70. And he says in Acts chapter 1, he says, And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. So the power has to come upon you. It has to come upon you. When you, when you see someone that has power, Kelly was just testifying of her husband, Arnie. He's out. He's, 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 he's hitting everybody. He's out there, and he's hitting them with these tracks, these cards that he's got. This, it can link you to the Hardcore Christianity site. And she was saying, hey, these are all these divine appointments. People saying, hey, God has been doing something. I had this encounter. This is what I needed at this time. Hey, I, I, this is exactly what I've been praying about. He was now operating in power and authority, and it put him into a divine situation. He, those are what's called divine encounters where God set him up. He ordains the steps of a righteous man, and now you're in the fruit-bearing season. It's not like you're just scattering seed everywhere. Sometimes you got to do that. Brother Joe does that in San Francisco, and you're just making a proclamation to the thousands, the masses that are there for shopping and for conventions and Everybody else that's walking the streets, they need to hear the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. But let me tell you, there's times when you're just walking and the Lord's speeding it up for Brother Arnie, saying, I'm going to put you together with the divine appointments. I'm going to put you together. You only got so many cards. I'm going to put you through the people who are ready. And it's building his faith and it's encouraging and those things are making an impact. In John chapter 20, verse 19, he says this. And on the first day of the week when the doors were shut, the disciples were assembled together. And it says, uh, he said, peace be with you. And he said this, and he showed them his hands and his side, and his disciples were glad. This was on the resurrection of Jesus. And he said to them again, peace be with you, as the Father sent me, so I send you. And after he said this, he breathed on them, and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. So they're not baptized with the Holy Spirit, but Jesus raised from the dead. He's got the Holy Spirit in full measure, and he breathes on them. So they receive the Holy Spirit. They're waiting, and they're tearing in the upper room until the Holy Spirit comes upon them in Acts chapter 2. And it says they're continually praising God, and they're worshiping God. They're, they're happy. They're filled. they got an expectation. But that doesn't mean they're not baptized with the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon those who love him. If you love me, you obey me. If you obey me. Then me and my father will come and make a home with him. God's looking for everybody to get saved. He's trying to save them all. But when you're looking for the power, now to whom much has been given, more is required. You can't just show up on a Wednesday Bible study and have some camaraderie and some word. You can't just show up on Sunday service. You can't just walk through the motions anymore. God filled you with his Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is now in you. You're accountable for much. Oh, I don't need... I, vacations. Hey, when I go on vacations, I'm looking for new territory to, to, to get people saved. I, I was seeing these divine encounters. I was seeing stuff. Even when I would go out and I was selling merchandise. I remember I was in Hawaii and there was a guy sitting there who was drinking, but he didn't look like he was, he was too far gone yet, but he was sleeping on that beach. And I don't know what I said to him. I began to preach to him and uh, he was receiving it. Next thing you know, the waitress comes. She's crying and said, I've seen that man around here for days and months. He said, after you preached to him, I saw him go over there and throw that alcohol in that dumpster. 
He goes, I'm a Christian, but I'm not living right. And that was convicting to see the power of God's word. I've been neglecting the power of God's word. She was overriding it. She was overriding her conscience. That's where the devil's attacking you. You got a manifestation of something. You got some voices in your head. You got some fear. You got some drugs. You got some porn. You keep getting it together with bad people. You're worried about nuclear war. You're worried about all this chaos. But these are manifestations of the devil taking the war to you because he doesn't want you to take the war to him because that's the great commission. You're supposed to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And knowing this, that who he who believes and is baptized, that person gets saved. And then there's a sign to make sure you got the right believer. He's casting out devils. He's speaking with new tongues. He's getting rid of the devil. You can't poison the guy. He just keeps living. And then he's laying hands on sick people, and the sick people are recovering. There's signs to make sure you made an authentic believer. I've been to church. I've been saved almost 30 years. I've been to the church for 15 years. We started as a little strip mall church. We got the mega church. And all these people look the same. They all talk the same. We liked each other the same. We broke bread together the same. They all brought tithes and offering the same. But only some bore fruit. That's the difference, the wheat and the tares. They were sucking up all the, all the, all the seating. They were sucking up the space. They weren't doing anything. Well, if he gave you power, the power isn't, I don't, I got baptized with the Holy Ghost. I, I felt a little something, but it wasn't so, no overwhelming. I wasn't slain in the spirit. I've never been slain in the spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon me, I fall forward in my gut, weeping and crying over my sins because the scales are removed off my eyes and to see how unrighteous I am and to see how hypocritical I've been, to see how self-serving I've been. Oh, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he will convict the world of sin. Once you respond to that conviction with repentance, then he begins to lead you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He's doing it for his glory. It's for his glory that you would live right and that he would have his way with you. That's his desire. He's not trying to work with a misfit and a failure and a malfunctioned human being. He said, I make people new. But in order to be new, you got to walk down that road of faith. You got to be stretched. You got to be tested. You got to be tried. You got to keep going. You have to be, have some perseverance. Perseverance will develop some godly character. You can't get godly character because you went to Bible college. You can't have godly character because you were from a godly family. You can only have godly character when it's forged in you through you persevering what tough times, not easy times. Everybody can walk through easy times. You can burn days and weeks and months and years. They'll roll so fast you won't know what happened in the last decade. But when you're going through something, now those days are long. Now those days are treacherous. And when you don't know uh, how something's going to come through and it's not looking right, but you break through and you begin to activate your faith and you see that when you actually believed and you actually pressed in and said, I don't have any other choice. I'm being knocked back. The minute I'm trusting in myself and doubting, I'm being knocked back. You come to your senses and say, I have no choice but to keep pressing forward, to believe in God, to keep doing the right thing. Then you get some godly character. Oh, a lot of people are hopeless. They're hopeless because they don't have any character. They don't have any character because they didn't have any perseverance. But when you get godly hope, oh, he says the disappointment's over. You can't disappoint me. You literally couldn't disappoint me. I mean, I would be sad for some people. I'm sad when things are happening. I'm, I'm sad for people. My dad's in the hospital right now. His name's Don Cott. Good man, raised in uh, Milford, Nebraska, 80 years old, had two heart attacks, had cancer, uh, he, he does everything the doctors tell him to do, and he had to be uh, uh, admitted to the emergency room. He's in the hospital right now. He's 80 years old. He's 300 pounds, and he smoked for 35 years. Lucky Strike non-filters. So he's already an overcomer. God has already stretched out his days. Talked to him as mine is sharp, sharp as a tack. I talked to him twice a day, and he wants to live. So I said, Lord, don't take him until he's ready. And I was, I'm supposed to go back there here soon. I've been pushing it back because we've been trying to get some motivation here. We've been trying to get some momentum, rather. We're trying to build some momentum. I've been going four months hard. I go as hard as I can. I, I do everything I can. I preach as, as hard as I can. I'm trying to just go over the basics. It's the basics. You need power and authority. Then the devil's going to do the same one, two to you. First, he's going to throw a lie. That's his jab. And if that jab connects, a boxer does not throw the right hand until the jab connects. And once that jab connects and you receive that lie, boom, then he hits you with fear. 
Once he hits you with lies and you believe that lie is truth for you, it says, as a man thinketh, so is he. So if you're a loser, you become a loser. You become that little third grade kid that was bullied. You become that 18-year-old woman that was date raped. You become that guy that was fired unjustly and had to live in your van. You become that man once he strikes you with fear because now your mind is flooded with those past memories, regrets, and sorrows. And then you begin to take offenses. Because the devil had to use somebody to do what he wanted to do to you. He had to do it through somebody's hands, through somebody's words. So now you begin to take an offense. Now the devil's got an open door. And he just comes right back in. That's why you go to rehab for a year, two years. And within two weeks, you can be whacked out of your mind. The guy was for two years preaching on the street doing miracles, seeing people truly saved because the word of God is powerful. It is effective. You begin to preach it, something will happen. I'm not really, I've, I've street preached, and man, I, there's times I've, I've started letting it rip, you know, just one, two guys and crowds coming along, and they were just mesmerized with the word of God, and I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? Well, God was revealing how powerful his word is when you have power and you have authority. You begin to speak it in faith. It begins to pierce people. It begins to pierce people. My expertise, though, is going around other, other preachers who are preaching up on the box. And when the people start arguing and getting mad, then I say, hey, you're wrestling with God. You're not wrestling with that man. You're wrestling with truth that's trying to penetrate your heart. God is for you. He's not against you. He's trying to help you right now. That's why you're wrestling because your flesh was crying out to be served. You thought you were going to put 12 drinks in you and you were praying you might meet some promiscuous female to do what you desire to do with your flesh. And this is interrupting your, 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 your thoughts and your attitudes. It's judging you now and so you're wrestling to see do you want to continue in this life oh you want to get out and see something go follow go follow joe around he'll show you you ain't got no ministry follow him around you ain't got no ministry i'll take you to walmart buy you a 20 cooler and your first case of water go put ice on it and go walk, walk around these bus stops if you're a woman don't go unless you have a man with you that's not your job to go out there in the streets but if you're a man, you get out there and you go during the bus when there's no room under the shade and the sun's beating on their face and you go, hey, can I give anyone a water? After they're drinking the water, let them get a few sips before you open your mouth. Don't jump the gun too quick. And then begin to testify of what Jesus did for you. And then to testify, hey, if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Do you need prayer? Do you need help? I'll pray for you before I go. The bus is about to come. Well, what do you need to pray for? Oh, people will open up. They know their bus is coming. You can't give them an all-nighter so they'll take a shot at it. Ministry is right there out on your street, right on your highways, right on your phone, calling that Rolodex of people you know. But if fear has waged the war against you, now you're just thinking about all the things that could be, that should have been, that might be, that if this wouldn't have happened, I'd be here, and if it wasn't for them. And he puts you in the entanglements. The Bible says you got to cut off this sin that so easily entangles people. If you want to stop a Christian, Satan just throws a net, and you walk right into it, and now, hey, here's all your troubles binding you up together. Now, let's continue on with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit comes upon him. Boom, and 3,000 people get saved. So he goes from doubting Jesus to now the Holy Spirit comes upon him, and 3,000 people get saved that day. Then we, we, we fast forward to Acts chapter 6. Now we got some people that are going to be table waiters. Stephen and Philip are two of them. And they're going down to Samaria. And they're preaching Christ. And it says he's moving with grace. He was full of grace. Stephen was full of grace. He was full of power. And he was performing great wonders and signs to the people. So he wasn't an apostle. He was just a student of the apostles. He received an anointing to be a table waiter. He learned to be a servant. And the qualifications to be a servant for anything in the kingdom of God, you got to be full of wisdom. And he says, you, you got to have a good reputation. And he says, you got to be able to conduct yourself right. There, there's some qualifications. You can't just be some chicken, rebellious. Well, you know, that's not how I roll, brother. You know, when the Lord tells me to go, I just couldn't be accountable to what you had me do. I had to just go. No, those loosey-goosey people ain't ready you got to have a good reputation, meaning your word means something to you. You come through. You put in the work. You do what you say you're going to do. You humble yourself. 
And he says, and you had to have wisdom. You had to have some biblical insight. You had to have some knowledge. You had to see some people. Okay, this is how it works. And now you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so he's moving with signs, wonders, and miracles. Then in Acts chapter 8, uh, Philip goes down to Samaria. These guys get saved. These guys get baptized. So they're saved after the outpour of the Holy Spirit. They're saved. They're baptized, but the Holy Spirit hadn't come upon them. So you can't tell me every single time that you're saved and you get water baptized, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That's what the Holy Spirit came down on Cornelius before he even was baptized, knew anything about baptism. He's hearing the word of God for the first time through a prophetic dream. And the Holy Spirit comes down and fills him. He's praying in tongues. And then the disciples say, should we forbid these men water who received the same Holy Spirit as us? And then they were water baptized. But in this case, in Acts chapter 8, the Holy Spirit hadn't came on them yet. So they send for Peter and John. Peter and John come down. They lay their hands on them. And they receive the Holy Spirit power. So there's a difference if you don't have any power, you need to receive the Holy Spirit power. You're saved. That's great. Once you're saved, you're eligible for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, but you got to want him, and you got to count the cost. You can't just run around like you used to run around. You can't think like you used to think. you got to go through a renewal of your mind. you got to be accountable because if he wages a war against the saints, oh, he's going to wage a war against what? Those who have power. Notice when they sent all those bombs over uh, from Russia over to uh, Ukraine, they, they blew up all their power stations. They're like, hey, see how you like no lights or no internet. net. We're about to crank this thing up. This thing is cranking. It ain't going to do you no good to bind the demons over there. You're going to have to pray. Pray that these people who are on the top, they already got bunkers in the middle of mountains. They've been preparing for nuclear war since 1960, 1950. They ain't dealing with no radiation fallout. They, you, you strike someone full of these egos and pride, oh, you don't want to do that. So we got to pray for peace. We got to pray so that God would begin to intervene. There's some stories coming out saying, hey, they try to, they try to do something with a nuclear bomb, and they said they looked like somebody from the inside disconnected it and sabotaged it because on the inside they're saying hey this is imminent death for all of us we don't want nothing to do with these things so we need to be praying type people we need to be people that are moving in in the i got i got a voice uh, that god can hear he wants to hear the desires of my heart if you are serious about god this is all it would take if, if you really catch the holy spirit i'm not going to have the problem of of half filled uh Arizona Deliverance Center. You can go to the highways and the byways and move in power and move in authority to see miracles and people delivered and see people healed. All oh, this place will be full. And then you'll grow and then you'll have your own place and we'll have to get some new people and we'll just keep this cycle going. And you'll start your little offshoot of, of your ministry on wherever God's called you to do it. Maybe it's here, maybe it's somewhere else, but you're supposed to rise up. This, this word moves fast. They went from table waiting to boom, in the same chapter, moving with signs, wonders, and miracle power. Acts chapter 10. It says the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded. Oh, we already talked about that. That's where the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the Gentiles. Acts chapter 19. Now Paul is in the upper room. He comes to Ephesus. And he said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? He said, we didn't even as much hear there was a Holy Spirit. He said, what baptism did you receive? He said, we received John's baptism. He said, that was for repentance. He lays his hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. So God wants to get this thing going, and Satan's got this plan. He, he, he's got this plan. He wants to take the war to you. He wants to make you ineffective. And so Satan had the five I wills, and uh, he, he was drunk. Man, he, he, he was off his rocker uh, with, with delusions. And uh, he begins to, to say what he's going to do. He begins to say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm going to occupy heaven. I'm going to go up there. I'm gonna, and then he, then he goes a little further. He goes, you know what? I'm going to be the one exercising authority in heaven. And then he goes a little further and he says, hey, I'm going to have everybody in subjection to me. Once I use the authority, then they're going to bow down. They're going to submit to me. I'm going to be delegating how that thing goes down. 
Then he says, I'm going to possess God's glory. I'm going to apprehend that. I'm going to have that. And then he says, finally, he says, I'm going to be God. Ooh. Uh, hello, LDS. Hello, Mormon fundamentalists. You can't be God. There is one God. Hear, O Israel, our Lord, our God is one. Before him there were none. After him there will be no more. He alone is God. And you can meet that God through one mediator, Christ Jesus the Lord. And once Jesus has heard your prayer and seen that you got hungry and you've been waiting for him, then you can receive the Father and the Son making a home with you, which is the Holy Spirit. These three can be interchangeable. Somehow people get changed. It, it, Jesus is not coming to live inside you. He's at the right hand of the Father. The Father is on, on the throne, but equally God is the Holy Spirit. Yet some people get, got a little bit of confusion about that. My one buddy, he believes that at the end there's no Father and there's no Holy Spirit. They morph back into Jesus. And I'm like, oh, man. And I'm like, well, thank God he's merciful. And, and you love God and you love this word because he works through you and he's merciful. But look, we, we got to understand the more understanding you have, the more wisdom you have, you begin to get in the qualification seat. When you begin to have the Holy Spirit, you begin to have a good reputation, you begin to have some wisdom, you can rise up fast. But without these things, you, you can't even wait on tables and give food to widows. And you're wondering where your ministry is. Well, the book of Acts clearly shows you where your ministry is. It's lying dormant until you begin to operate in obedience. Pride, ooh, it's the, it's the killer. Pride causes to put oneself on the throne instead of God. Ooh, pride is what? That's what the devil's working with. He was drunk with pride. He was filled with pride. I mean, can you imagine how crazy it is to think that you're going to make all of heaven subjected to you? How drunk you had to be with pride to think you're going to possess God's glory. How drunk you had to believe to think you were going to sit on the throne as God himself. So he's delusional. But see, he has power. Luke 10, 19 says, I give you superior power. I give you power over the devil's power. But you're not going to have power over the devil's power if he's got his power working in you, which is lies. So when his lies are in you, it causes the same confusion that he had, which was upon himself. When the demons come and bring something, they're trained to bring it. There was a boy that was deaf. Jesus cast out the spirit that's deaf. Now the guy can hear. The boy can hear. There was a spirit that was dumb. He couldn't speak. The spirit's cast out that was dumb. He can speak. So they bring what they are onto a person. And his goal is to bring pride upon somebody and then pride, you begin to put yourself on the throne. Then pride causes you not to own your sin. That's one of the, the, heat, the heat that deliverance ministry takes. Like, we're not telling you to own your sin. you got to own your sin, and you got to repent of your sins, and you got to put it under the blood of Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the earth, and the blood will cleanse you from the unrighteousness. For without repentance, there is no gospel. So once you're under the gospel and the covenant of Jesus Christ, then deliverance is the children's bread. Now you can drive out these spirits that, that entice you. Oh, man, there's layers to demons. But when you don't know what it's have, like to have a sound mind, when you don't know what it's like to have eternal security, when you don't know what it's like to have hope, you got used to these crazy things going through your mind. And so I go through deliverance where I'm not wanting to do something. There's this barrier. And it says the word of God is a hedge. So I repented and I forgave and I went through some deliverance and this hedge goes up. So there's like a distance, like I have a correlation. Hey, I went through some deliverance. That stuff caused me a lot of depression. It caused me financial death, losing crazy money. It caused me anger. I'm not going there. There's this hedge. But I still had levels of demons because I thought it was just your sin nature. You get around too many Calvinists and, oh, what a wretched man I am. What a worm sinner I am. The Bible says, now that's how you were. And I understand that he who says he has no sin makes God a liar. We, we got some sins. There's sins of omission. There's the sins of commission. There's things sometimes you do, you know you shouldn't do it. Sometimes you do things uh, you don't do things, and you were mandated by the word to do them, and you don't do them, so there's those sins. But 
We're no longer bound and we're no longer slaves. The Bible says we're new creatures in Christ. So if we remain in him, he remains in us. And then he says, now we have this fellowship with him, reconciliation, that we can ask him anything. If the anything is according to his will, it will be done. And so his will is that we would be conformed in the image of Jesus. The will is that we would no longer live in sin, no longer have a practice of sin, but we would be overcomers and we begin to live in victory without the Holy Spirit. It's completely impossible. Possible, so he sends the Holy Spirit to make it possible. So pride then keeps you from apologizing to those we've offended. That's pride. Satan came up with that. It was so powerful that when Satan entered Judas, he came right into him. Once he put his bowl, they said, hey, which, one's gonna, which one of us is going to betray you? It, it can't be me. It can't be me. I said, I'll tell you who it is. It's the one that dips his bread into the bowl with me at this time. And his hand went, I mean, that's probably what you call a manifestation. And he says, okay, now you go do quickly what you've already conspired to do. And so he goes and he does it. It says Satan entered him. And now he betrays Jesus for the price of a slave. I think it was 40 shekels, 30 shekels of silver. And now when Jesus is crucified, he, in his delusional mind, Jesus got out of every trouble. Every time they tried to throw him off a cliff, every time they tried to get him in the synagogues, he just walked out right in the middle of them. You couldn't touch him. He knew it. He had seen it. But this time, he's crucified. Now he's dead. Now he's in the tomb. And he comes to the realization, and he throws the money back to the Jews. He said, look, I betrayed innocent blood. He says, hey, don't put that on us. Don't put that on us. So he had repentance in his mind, but he was blinded to repent and apologize to God. Oh, Satan can blind the minds of those that believe not. Once he gets in there, you don't play with these demons. They can fool you. They can fool you. Well, a Christian filled with the Holy Spirit who thinks they could do drugs? I've met them. <laughs> Popping, smoking, doing... Are you kidding me? The Bible says, can someone... Throw hot coals into the lap and not suffer the consequences of the burns. A man shall, shall reap what he has sown. If you sow into the flesh, that means you do what you want to do. You're going to reap corruption. If you live according to the Spirit, you'll reap life and life eternal. So we got to apologize to people that we offended. Oh, I had so much pride. I was talking about it today. As my dad, I said, man, my brother got married. And I really didn't talk too much to his, his wife's family. And I went to like a village inn and they were sitting down. And he had a brother that was in my class in high school, but I never knew who he was. I knew, I knew his name or something. And so the, my brother's mother and father-in-law and two brother-in-laws are sitting there. And they're like, hey. And I just waved to him and sat down. My brother, who's younger, gets up, shakes their hand, talks to him for five minutes or so. I said, oh, I was saved. What a, what a prideful person. What a prideful person I was. Oh, you get drunk with pride. Pride, I was just reminiscing of what pride used to do to me. Boy, it's embarrassing. I'm kind of a smiler person. I have a hard time smiling at men, but sometimes at the grocery store, if women are smiling, I smile. I'm kind of happy. And a couple of women were smiling at me, and the Lord gave me a wake-up call, saying, remember when you were so prideful when a woman would smile at you? You used to think they liked you sexually. And I would literally think, oh, yeah, she likes me. Yeah, that's another one for the books. Yeah, I'll just keep telling. What a delusional person that would think someone who's kind and just a little bit friendly. Yet my pride was just being fed delusions. Delusions. How do you get delusions? You, you mess around in sin. And Satan will throw what he has, what he was full of. He'll throw it on you, delusional things. Pride keeps us from authentic biblical repentance and restoration. Pride doesn't want you to go all the way. Me and uh, Brother Joe had a wonderful deliverance. One of, my, one of our friends, been working with the ministry for a while. He drives all the way. He's in a men's, men's home. Right now, it's not with his family, not with his kids. And uh, he drives all the way here, got to be back at night. He drove all the way here for deliverance. And uh, the word of prophecy was there. And I said, hey, as I'm looking at it, God's showing me a vision. I said, what you were doing, my friend, you were holding your ball. It was, it was that mind. 
You know, like the kid that would come to the park, there's no balls. One kid's got the ball, and he don't want the rest to play. That's his ball. I said, that's what you were doing with the Lord. You didn't want to surrender what was yours just in case God didn't come through. You were willing to walk into the building. You were willing to walk and look through the scriptures. If God could do for you what you wanted him to do for you, then you were going to be all in and let it go. But that's not how it works. He says, you got to surrender. you got to come in with open arms. He said, that's exactly what God has shown me. I was trying to get right for my wife. I was trying to get right so things would go well. I was trying to get the favor of God, but I wasn't willing to surrender to God. I said, now I'm learning to put him first. No matter what comes my way, no matter if my wife says I got to stay here for a month or two more months, I got to do whatever God tells me to do, and I got to show him that I'm putting him first. Well, let me tell you, you have an attitude like that, deliverance is going to go quick. And that was a quick one. And I, and I was hoping Brother Joe don't think, hey, this is how it goes down every time. We're two seconds of devil. I got to the, to the come out, and they were ripping out for the next 45 minutes. Why? Because now God hates the devil and zeal for his house consumes him. He doesn't want his children that are repenting and coming back to him to be pillaged with demons and constantly enticed. Going back to what I had, I had these enticers. I had this wall of protection so something would entice me to go over and I'd have a reminder of my deliverance. I would have a reminder of the word of God. I would have a sense of victory and peace that I'm living in now that I wasn't living in before the deliverance. But I was used to the constantly pushing and tempting. I didn't know you could get rid of those. When he comes now, it's like a flaming arrow. You can see it a long ways away, just like those rides that are down there at the uh, Fetchens Memorial uh, Coliseum for the State Fair. You can see those things a mile away. I can see him coming a mile away now. Before, he was just pushing me constantly. Well, just a little further. Oh, it's okay. Is that really sin? Is it? Well, I don't know. He was constantly pushing. Now you can get rid of those. But you got to renew your mind. That takes renewing your mind. That, that, that takes now understanding that, look, I'm not supposed to be suffering with sin. There's not supposed to be a desire in me to want to rebel against God and to do something that would harm him. There, there's not supposed to be a desire in me that would self-destruct everything that he built in me. There's not supposed to be a desire in me to destroy my family. There's not supposed to be a desire in me to destroy my health or my body. That's foreign. That doesn't come from God. I'm in this flesh, but if I'm walking by the Spirit and in wisdom and in power, I'm not supposed to struggle like that. Now, everyone's tempted. Everyone has their time of weakness. When the devil strikes you, if you look back, it's always in the time of weakness. He knows how to take the opportunity, and he knows when to throw his shots. But the reality is when you're walking strong, it's an arrow comes, and you just put up the faith and extinguishes the flaming darts of the wicked one. That's how Christians are supposed to live. You're not supposed to think, man, I, uh, you, if I wasn't saved, you'd really get it. No, you're not supposed to be boiled up with, with sin, ready to overflow but by the grace of God, you were able to contain yourself. No, that's not freedom. That's not freedom. I, I don't, I don't want to go around anybody who does drugs. When you're on drugs, I've tried to pe preach to people on drugs. You don't lead them to Christ. They, got, they go into their high mode. I've, 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 I've preached to people who are high and like, man, I want to hear more of this, dude. There's something to this. I can feel this. I went over to their, next, their house the next day, and they didn't remember why I was there. Like, you, you, I told you to come over today, this early? I was like, dude, it's one. <laughs> Couldn't even remember. You hit them when you can, but hey, that's not your demographic that you're searching for, the high ones. You're looking for someone that's sitting in their right mind. You're looking for somebody that's been thinking about God. You, you, you want to reach somebody who's tired of being broken and busted and discouraged and perplexed with what's happening. They're looking for a little peace of mind. They're looking for some answers. Take what you can get, but you're going to have a lot more success. Pride keeps you. It's deadly. It's deadly to your personal and spiritual life and the life of the church. Oh, you're hurting the church now. You're hurting the church. It's more than you. You're accountable. You're accountable to the body of Christ. God's called you to assemble with the saints. He told you to surround yourself with a cloud of great witnesses. 
You're supposed to bring your gift. Your gift is supposed to be able to do something for the body of Christ. It's supposed to be able to build somebody up according to their needs. Satan, he fell because of pride, and it's his number one tool. And then what happens? After a while, it wears off. My one buddy was a first-round draft choice. He won a Super Bowl with the Dallas Cowboys in the 90s. Man, I, I was around Nate Newton one day, Michael, uh, Michael Irvin, all these guys, uh, Charles Hayes, pride like you can't believe. It tried to rub off on me. I looked at that point, I was the size of those guys. We're in the Cowboy Cafe that was owned by one of the Tony Dorsett. And next thing you know, people are kind of looking, wanting to know. I'm like, oh, this ain't me. I just got out of my car praying. I just got out of my car. I was here for business. I wasn't here for hanging out. I was, I was listening to some, some cassette tapes, man. I was filled with the spirit. That wasn't a place for me. No, the, the hedge of protection was going up. But it wasn't up for those guys. They were being flooded. I go over to my friend's house probably six years ago now, and all these trophies, all these game balls, all this, and he says, what kind of life is this that you peak at 24 and the rest of your life is downhill? And I'm like, dude, you're in good shape. I mean, the dude looked like he was still in his 30s and he was in his 40s. I was like, you got superior genetics. I mean, you got a house that's paid. Well, it's not the big house you had in Irving, Texas. He couldn't see his blessings. He couldn't see him. Why? Because once pride builds you up far enough, then he pulls the rug out from underneath you. Oh, a lot of people had it. You know how many people fall in the jails to say, you don't understand, I had a successful business. I had 23 guys working under me. I had a roofing company. When, when there's roof damage, you just charge as, the, as much as the insurance company will pay. People don't care. It's an insurance claim. And I had all the credit. I had net 90 on all my distributors. I got paid from the insurance company in 90 days. It was, it was like take, I had everything, but there was something in me saying you want more. It wasn't, I couldn't see my blessings of my family, of my kids. I couldn't see the blessings of this business. I took it all for granted. I had more money than I knew what to do with. And so I started serving myself. I started drinking. Then I started doing drugs. Then I started sleeping with women. And once I started that, that's how I ended up here, an addict. Oh, what happened? The devil, sometimes he'll build you up on falsehoods, on lies, on delusions, and he will get you believing it. Oh, it goes on and on. It goes on and on. I, I, I've seen the craziest things, the guys falling, falling like you can't believe. I've I, I seen so many people in the jails. You, you just think in your mind that it's a bunch of South Phoenix West Side dudes in there that were gang banging and kicking up dust. No, in the jails, you got everybody. When anybody that's drinking that had three, three drinks, four drinks, that's a DUI. They're going to send you for three days. The second time, they're going to send you for 30 to 60 days. If you grabbed your wife's arm, it was mutual, just slow down, crazy woman, or something, you, you're, you, there's a bruise. You're going to jail. You're going to spend a week. There's people with mortgage fraud when that mortgage debacle came through. There was tons of mortgage brokers in there. And I seen these guys, finally their eyes open. Well, sometimes it's demonic that their eyes get open because Satan's just ripping the rug out. And so you're trying to preach life to them, and they can see what they did to themselves. They can see the repercussion to their sins. They can finally see what they were doing to their family. They can finally see what they were doing to their body, but they're following, falling, and they're spiraling down so far that sometimes you can't even reach them because they're losing hope. They said, I can't get it all back. My wife's filed for divorce. I lost all my accounts. I burned all the distributors. Uh, no one's going to trust me. I burned all these good workers. My name's Mud. I can't do these things, and I'm too old to get back on a roof to do what I used to do when I was 25 years old. They, and I say, hey, there's other careers. What do you mean? Hey, you can have, th they can't hear anymore. And sometimes they only come to church one or two times, and they're done. These are people that 
The word of God was sowed in their hearts. They had encounters with Jesus. I've met people that couldn't even remember that they were born again and walked with Jesus for three or four years. They could not even remember the encounter until they tried to kill themselves in solitary confinement. And God had to come and speak to them audibly and remind them. He had to do something supernatural and bring back the word of God in remembrance because Satan is able to steal the word of God out of your heart. He's able, able to steal your testimony. He's able to steal your dreams. He's able to steal your hopes. He's able to steal your children from you. He's able to steal anything from you, even your own salvation. How can you lose your salvation? Look, you can give anything up. You could sell your kidneys, drive over to, if you're under 25, they'll probably buy them over in China. You can sell them both. If you lose both, you're dead. They don't care. They'll take them. How much you want for them? You can sell anything. You can sell out anything you want, and he knows how to do it because he himself sold out. He had a position in heaven. He had delegated authority. He had incredible beauty. He had all these attributes that were given to him, yet it wasn't enough. And so you got to understand the infection of Satan if you want to get delivered. You got to have some revelation. You, you can't just say, oh, we're, we're going to try deliverance. Try deliverance. You need to try Jesus Christ. And you need to get close to him. And you need to have a little bit of love for him. You got to have a little bit of sorrow, what you drug him through, what you did to him, what you did with his gifting, what you did with his word, what he did, you did with those talents that he gave you. There's got to be a little bit of remorse. Otherwise, how could you really get delivered? Because that's what he wants you to do. If you don't do what you're called to do, he's going to get you. He has his way with the idle, idle minds. Your mind goes into idol. It goes into idolatry. It goes into nothingness. You can have an idle mind and be busy all day long with your work and all your chores and all your hobbies, but you can still have a spiritual idle mind. You're not understanding the scripture. You have to have your mind fixed on the things above and not the things below. You have to have your mind on Christ and the calling that the most important things are souls. When I, I guarantee you the first few times I led people to Jesus, It was nothing eloquent. It wasn't nothing pretty. It still isn't. It's always kind of weird. It's weird a lot of times. I, many times I've been on the job site really breaking down a word. And I'm breaking. I'm thinking, man, I'm going. He's listening. He likes this. And I'm preaching and I'm kind of fired up because he's giving me an ear. Not thinking that he has to be cordial because I'm hiring him to do the job. And all of a sudden I hear some weeping. Oh! And some dude over there was listening to everything, and it pierced him, and now he's broken. See, you don't know everything. I just, I thought it was this guy. I'll preach. I had no idea. That was the divine appointment. He just had to be in earshot to hear that word to get saved. That guy got radically saved. I forgot his name. That was in the early 2000s. It was an incredible testimony. He got plugged into the church. He got blessed like you can't believe. Uh, it was incredible. God just did an incredible work in his life so fast. Well, he had said, hey, I, I learned all that when I was in fifth and sixth grade. But then junior high got a little busy. I got a little uh, violating my conscience. It got pierced a little bit by high school. I was off doing whatever I wanted to do. After high school, it was all about me. And he had forgot about the Lord. But the Lord didn't forget about him. And the Lord didn't forget about you. He's not mad at you. He already judged you at the cross of Calvary and pronounced his son guilty in your stead. But you got to now put your trust in him. Cast your care upon him because he cares for you. You need to let him pay for your sins. You need to confess them. If you confess them, he's faithful and just to forgive you of them and then to count them against you no more. That's deliverance right there. The second step is understanding whose voice is speaking to you. I'm not going to listen to the devil. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Hey, anytime. What do dudes do when they're playing football? Like, man, we're going to win. We're going to do this. We're going to get them. We're going we're gonna to do A, B, C. You're, you're pumping yourself up for a victory. You can't win on, on a team that wasn't any good. I was like that in high school. Then we had to play Southeast, our rivals. And they had Denny Dushaw, six foot six, 270-pound lineman. They had all these dudes that were going Division One. Tim Herbin that signed for the Huskers. He was 6'6 six, six and 250. And everyone's like, oh, man, I hope we don't get beat up too bad today. You think we had a shot? We were defeated coming in. 
I was like, man, I wasn't too much of a hype, man. I, I was smoking too much marijuana. I kind of just rolled with it. I thought, well, I'm going to just do my thing. I'm going to just, you know, have a good game for the scouts, for myself. No, that's defeated attitudes, defeated attitudes. Nobody coming together in unity. Nobody coming together to support somebody, to believe. Oh, no, you, you, you're setting yourself up for failure, you got to believe. If you believe, all things are possible for those who believe. If you believe, you can be fully delivered. You can be fully delivered. If you believe, you got to cast these things out 50 million years. Then you're going to be casting them out for 50 million years. You need, you need tapes. I knew a dude that was listening to cast out tapes on two CDs at once. He had his headphones in one ear and he was playing the other one in his computer. And just going... And I'm like, bro, you're looking at porn. You, you were just listening to two cast-out CDs at once last month. Why? Because you got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, you don't need anybody to teach you. God still uses teachers and preachers and evangelists and prophets. They're all beneficial to the church who's going to benefit you. But you don't need that stuff. You have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to take you on a journey. He has to take you on a journey. He has to show you where you really are. He has to show you the depths of his mercy. He has to show you how compassionate and, long, compassionate and long-suffering he is. He's got to show you how kind he is. Because when he shows you all those things, then you realize I can trust him. See, after a while, being in this sin-stained world, you don't trust nobody anymore. I was a ticket scalper. And let me tell you, dudes were so slick, especially when you went to L.A. in the forum. So if you, hey, man, I got four seats. You got four lowers? Well, you know, that's, that's four or $500 worth of seats. And he's like, I got to buy it right here. How much you want for them? Well, you let guys middleman your seats, but you got to kind of step behind them. So if they break off, you're going the same direction as them, and now it's a foot race for your tickets. Dudes were so slick that they would have four upper seats, and they would take them like this, and they'd be like, yeah, I got them right here, and they would pass the four, and somebody would take off with your 500 bucks. And these were the scalpers robbing other scalpers. Well, over time and time, I learned you don't let anything out of your sight because this is a war. It's a battlefield on these streets. The, the people are not out for your best interest. They are out for themselves. Well, man, once you get that mindset that that's how Satan operates, you can't let him get behind you. You got to make sure he's in front of you. He says when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you receive sight and you have vision. You got to keep the enemy in front of you. You got to keep your eye on him. You can't let him sneak up behind you. You can't let him have his way with you. You can't be drunk. You can't be high. You got to be sober. You got to be vigilant. He's an adversary looking to destroy you. So you need to be able to use the mind of Christ, to see him and understand what's he trying to do. He's trying to take you away from God. He's trying to make you feel lonely. He's trying to make you feel depressed. He's trying to make you feel hopeless. He's trying to disqualify you like you don't have a Holy Ghost ministry. He's trying to tell you that you can't be a rich man in heaven. You don't understand about talents before I wrap it up. If T.D. Jakes got five talents, you got uh, Billy Graham's got five talents, and you get one. Billy Graham, if he didn't fill all the stadiums that God told him to fill and he didn't work all the years he was supposed to work, you can be richer than Billy Graham if you're faithful for your one talent. You're not accountable to bear the fruit of five talents if you've only got one talent. You're to be faithful with that talent and double it up, triple it up, quadruple it up. So if a man with five talents didn't double or triple the thing up and you did with the one, you got more riches than him in glory. I don't know. I, I, hey. If I gave up the things in this world, I'm interested in the things that he gives. Hey, I'm interested in him, but I'm interested in everything he said. He wouldn't have told me about those things if it wasn't a little bit of motivation to it. Like, hey, I sacrifice here. I lay down my life here. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good up there. You got to get, well, if I can just get in by the grace of God, Brother Rick, it'll be enough for me. That's all I need is a place up in glory. Not too big of a mansion. Just a little old shack could be good for me. i like, dude, you need to shake that devil out of your head. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you so. I'm about to go and get busy and start putting them together for you. So he's saying, hey, those are for who serve him. 
There, there's something. There. The best thing is his presence. I, I can't live for that. I don't understand streets of gold. I don't understand where there is no longer any sun, but God is the light. I don't understand that there's no sickness and there's no temptation. There's no death. I can imagine it, but this is so beyond what I can imagine. But see, what I know now is real, that Jesus is real, and he's a comforter. He's a comforter. He comes with me every day. I see things. And I said, oh, man, I'm not going down that road. I've been depressed. I, I've watched the news. I, I, I used to watch uh, jo Joy Behar. I used to watch her just to get emotions because I was kind of burned out with everything. And so I turn into this show called The View. And you listen to these women cackling and talking lies. And they got like, I could see their tongues coming out like snakes and lizards. And I would do this stuff just to create emotion, and I was playing around with sinful emotions. Long enough, you get into this negativity, you get into these conspiracies, you get into the New World Order and, and, and the World Economic Forum and all these cycles running this thing to hell in high places. You can start getting depressed. You can start getting discouraged. You can start losing hope. You can start losing a passion for winning the one soul, for building somebody up according to their needs. And it says whatever comes in, that's what's going to come out. When I was depressed and when my money was being shaken, man, I was telling everybody all these things. Nobody listened. I had two people. I said, hey, man, this economy is about to crash. This thing's about to go to hell in a handbasket. All these houses are going down to foreclosure, and nobody believed me. I told everybody in my church, and they thought I was crazy. Only two guys bought gold. It was 600 an ounce. It was a Mormon guy, and he goes, thanks, man. I would have been dead busted if it wasn't for that. Thanks for telling me to do that. The other guy I told to buy the gold didn't even remember it was me that told him to buy the gold, and he bragged to me about buying gold. So it got me nowhere. I wasn't preaching Christ. Why? Because fear had penetrated my heart. Oh, now it got in. Fear got in. I was already a minister. I was already leading people to Christ. I was already discipling people. I was seeing divine miracles. I was seeing healings. But the devil, he was rocking everybody. That was, a, that was a shadow. See, everybody was supposed to be in the body of Christ, was supposed to see what would happen in 2008, 9, and 10, and you were supposed to prepare yourself for what's happening now. You weren't supposed to go buy that big house and keep up in yourself and your big things because now those big things are going to have to be traded for some food because it's going to get real expensive. And uh, I'm not worried about it because my father owns a cat on a thousand hills. All the gold is his. All the silver is his. He'll lay up the riches for the wicked for the righteous people. Uh, he's going to take care of us. He's never seen the children of God forsaken. Those ain't, ain't nobody begging for bread that's a spirit-filled child of God. They ain't got to do it. They can stand on the corner. They can walk around, and somebody's going to bump into you and go, I don't know who you are or what's going on, but something's telling me. I don't even know what this is to give you this money to write this check to you because God owns it all. If you're walking by faith, faith opens the doors to the supernatural miracle working power of God and you don't fall into statistics. You don't fall into categories. You're a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. You're people that are set apart by God himself for his own special purposes. You ain't got to worry about the money. You ain't got to worry about what you're going to eat. You ain't got to worry about your clothes. So fear, we can't play with it. Pride. We can't play with it. And, hey, if you get rid of those things, then the manifestations get chopped off. Remember he said, hey, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Every branch of me that doesn't bear fruit, we cut it off. Everyone that's bearing some fruit, I got to prune it up so it'll bear even more fruit. He's, he's got to go through a process of cutting some stuff off. The thing that ain't ever going to bear fruit is pride. The thing that ain't ever going to bear fruit is fear. If you do not believe lies, it's impossible for fear and it's impossible for pride to be operating in your life. We don't have to be complex here as the body of Christ. It's the simplicity of the word of God so you can live in victory and you can become a disciple. I preached that same message three or four times this year, but why? The Lord keeps saying, go back to the foundation. Go back... I, Go back to the, to the meat of this thing because what? I've been around Maricopa County and there's a void of the meat and the understanding of the gospel and understanding how power and authority is in operation through your life. So we're going to pray first. And we're going to do 
We're going to get rid of the pride. We're going to repent of that. We're going to repent of the things that pride made us do by not loving people, not forgiving people for holding on to the offenses. Tell the Lord we're sorry. And then make straight the way of the Lord. We're going to ask him for the power, the Holy Spirit power. Ooh. Sometimes I got, I got so much ready to go, and I got nowhere to deploy it all. I don't know. I'm, I'm, something's going to kick off. Some, uh, something's about to happen. Me and Pete and Danny, Yousef, Joe, uh, Brother Jason, we're about to kick something off. Pray for us. Something's about to happen. Something's about to go into the launching pad because something's birthed in us, and we got to get it out. Well, that's the Holy Spirit power. He's not a respecter of persons just following on, falling on us. He'll fall on you. Who's worthy to receive it? Those in whom God called out of the world. He chose you. No one can say Jesus is the Lord unless the Father revealed the Son. This is his will to call you. And he didn't call you just to get saved, but he called you to be a representative, an ambassador of the kingdom. So he wants to give you the power. So receive the power. Receive eternal life, eternal life through Christ Jesus. And then... Hey, the demons will come right out. They, they won't even want to be there. You get on fire with the Holy Ghost, man, they, they can't take that. They don't want to be where they're not welcome. They don't want to be where there's division. They like to make people slaves. And they'll come out, and then you, get, you stay on your knees. You stay in prayer, and you stay in the Word of God. And then you pray real prayers. When you're reading the Word of God that you're to do something, and you got fear, you overcome it. You ask God for the strength. You begin to step out. You begin to walk victoriously. And let me tell you, revival will happen for you. Revival will happen for your house. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you right now. We humble ourselves. Lord, we acknowledge you as God, the one true God, the Savior of the world. We thank you for eternal life through your Son, Christ Jesus. We thank you that you made him sin who knew no sin. And it was your will, Jesus, to lay down your life as a ransom so that, Lord, I could be the recipient of a new life through your shed blood. Thank you, Jesus, for this, this faith. You gave me a measure of faith. Thank you so much, Lord. You didn't leave me alone. Thank you, Lord. You gave me the promise. You sealed me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, I want to apologize for pride, Lord. I've been holding back on you, Lord. Lord, some things I don't even understand why I did it. I don't know if I was afraid. I don't know if I didn't feel I could trust you because I've been burned so many times. But I just want to apologize to you for holding back. That was pride. I'm sorry, Lord. I want to tell you that I'm sorry for the way that I treated people when I knew that I was to apologize. And I was counting up their sins. And I said, well, they've done all this to me and they're not doing any apologizing my way. Why should I do that? Lord, I want to apologize. That was sin and rebellion. What I was supposed to do was not determine on what they did to me or what they were willing to do for me. It was what you commanded me to do. So I repent of bitterness and anger towards other people. And I ask you to forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for the way I treated people. I hurt your people, Lord. Forgive me the way I've treated my family, Lord. Forgive me the way that I neglected the church. I was called to be a member of the church of God. I was supposed to help people in the church, build them up, bless them. I was supposed to be using my gift. Lord, please forgive me of being idle with the Holy Spirit power. Please forgive me, Lord. Lord, I, I, I make a declaration, Lord. I know the time's winding down. I don't know if we got two years, we got 20 years, but I can see it's winding down. And I don't want to be caught. I don't want you to come like a thief in the night and bring a surprise upon me, Lord. I want to be living right. I want to be living in faith. So I make this commitment, Lord, to spend time with you and to put you first. I'm tired of the putting you second, Lord. That thing don't work. I'm putting you first, Lord. In Jesus' name, I thank you. I can do it. Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm praying for those people that They've been born again, but they can't recount a time when Holy Spirit power came upon them. There's some streamers, there's some people watching this video, and you can't recount a time when the Holy Spirit came upon you. Heavenly Father, if that's you, just stretch out your hands. Lord, that's me. I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, I need to receive power. 
of the Holy Spirit to live in victory, to live a life that you called me to live, Lord, to preach your word and to love the unlovable, to work in the authority in which you've delegated to me, Lord, to work in power, to see you heal people through my hands, to see people saved from the wrath to come. Thank you for filling me right now with the Holy Spirit and power. I receive it right now by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Now, I thank you, Lord. Now it's time to go into the deliverance. I bless everybody that's going home. But, Lord, I'm praying for the people that are coming down to be delivered. I'm praying that they would come with an expectation that they would come in faith. And I pray, Lord, that you would move swiftly and powerfully, Lord, to deliver them from the oppressor the oppressor, to deliver them from the enticer, to break the chains off them, to deliver them from the lies that have been infiltrated in their mind through Satan. I thank you that you're going to do it and be glorified in Jesus' name. And if that's you, come on down, line up in between where this black mat is and this carpet, and the ministry team's going to come forward. And in a couple minutes, we're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're coming forward in faith. We're not coming to see the ministry team. We're coming to see you. Thank you, Jesus. We're coming to see you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. You gave the disciples power to clean, to heal from infirmities, sicknesses, and diseases. You gave them power to cast out demons and unclean spirits. Thank you, Lord that you're going to drive them out right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, we take authority over you. We take authority over depression. We take authority over suicidal thoughts and self-destructive behaviors. We take authority over anxiety and racing thoughts. I bind all your power, every power that you wedged yourself in through hurts and wounds. I bind your power in the name of Jesus. All the loneliness, all the spiritual loneliness, I bind it in the name of Jesus. I command you, you're going to come out right now. Every false spirit that came upon the people, every the false spirit and lies, I bind you in the name of Jesus. You're not going to hide in this body. You're not going to hide in that man's brain in Jesus' name. You're not going to hide. I declare you bound in Jesus name you're not going to hide I declare Bishop blessed I declare Jason blessed right now I command all the anger and resentment this generational curse that came down from Jason's forefathers that tried to get this son and this father in division I bind this spirit of division right now in Jesus name I command you by the authority of Jesus all the spiritual exhaustion all the spirits that are blocking him from receiving a job and receiving financial blessings I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ the son of God now just take a few big breaths. Take a few big breaths. He'll come on out. Take a few big breaths. Come on out. Emphysema, come out of there. Demons from drugs in the past, come out. Demons from drugs in the past, come out of there. Demons from drugs in the past, come out of there. All the demons from drugs, all the demons from drugs, come out. You try to come down to Bishop, come out. Come out of there. All those spirits are transferred. They're not going to transfer. Come out of there right now. Come out, ministry stealer. I command you to come out. Ministry stealer, come out right now. I don't want to offend my friends. My friends know me as this guy. I don't want them to think that I don't love them and care. You're a liar. You're trying to destroy the ministry. Heavenly Father, help my friend, Lord. Lord, something happened to him, Lord. Something tried to shake him up, Lord. Something tried to crack him. Something tried to come in and destroy his joy. They try to destroy his hopes and his dreams, Lord. I pray that you would come and touch him right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the second chance of mercy. Thank you for the second chance at mercy. Thank you for the second chance to get his mind back. Lord, I just petition you and ask you to have mercy on this man. If it was him who sinned or his fathers who sinned in preceding generations, I'm asking you to forgive them, Lord. Let the blood of Jesus be applied to him so he could get his mind back. That he wouldn't go in where the doctor told him he was going. In Jesus' name. Come on. Just with your, come on. Take a big breath. Lord, I do not want these spirits to take my mind. I do not want these spirits to take my mind, Lord. I want you to help me. 
I want you to help me. All that depression. I command that spirit that talked suicide to her when she was a teenager. I command you by the authority of Jesus Christ to come out. You're trying to come back and destroy her joy. I command suicidal thoughts to come out of there right now. I command this loneliness and depression. I bind you right now. I'm commanding you to come out. All the loneliness and depression, feeling that nobody really loved her for who she is, thinking that she can't trust anybody anymore because all the bad things that happened to her. I command you to come out of there now. Come all the way out. Come all the way out. Come all the way out. I forgive these people that hurt me, Lord. I forgive them, Lord. There. Come out of there. Go. Go. Come out. Suicidal thoughts. Come out of there right now. Suicidal thoughts. Come out of there right now. Come out. That self-hatred. You lied to her for years. You told her she wasn't enough. You told her she wasn't pretty enough, smart enough, articulate enough. Come out right now. You're a liar. Stop oppressing this woman. There he goes. Come out. Come all the way 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 out. Keep going. Keep breathing. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Go. I forgive myself, Lord. I forgive myself, Lord. Thank you for mercy. I forgive myself. Come out of there. You're not going to take his mind. Come out of there. That mental illness, you come out of there right now. He's not mentally ill. You're running him around in circles with your lie. You're running him around in circles with all that fear. I bind you in Jesus' name and I command you to come out. Fear. You're the one running this whole thing. I command the tormenting spirits of fear to come out right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Quit jerking around and come out of there right now. I command you to come out of the soul. Come all the way out of the soul. Come all the way out of the soul. What do you need to be delivered from, sir? What do you need? Anger? Lord, we can. All right. Heavenly Father, we need to confess, confess a good confession, a confession of faith. Lord, please forgive us, Lord, a grumbling, Lord, not counting our blessings. Not seeing, Lord, that you were refining us through the fire, Lord. You were pruning things, Lord. Things that were entangling us. Things that were derailing us and distracting us. Lord, I repent of these attitudes, Lord. I repent of the curses that I said. The complaining I did to you, Lord. That caused the serpents to come out and bite your people in the wilderness, Lord. I repent in Jesus' name, Lord. I repent right now. All that blinders. I'm commanding the devil of blinders that blinded him to see the goodness of God, to see the word of God, to see the calling on his life. I bind this devil that blind his eyes. You manifested in anger. You manifested in grumbling and complaining, but you are a blinder. I command the spiritual blinders to come out right now. You blocked them from the knowledge of God. You blocked them from the will of God. You blocked them from good health. You're trying to get him sick. You're trying to give him some kind of ailment in this body, and I reject you in Jesus' name. Come out of there, this anger and rage, let's go. Double-mindedness, come out. Double-mindedness, one day he's praising God, one day he's cursing man who are made in the image of God. I command you to come out. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. All this depression, you come out of this man. Come out of there right now. That hopelessness and despair, I command you to come out right now. I command you right now. You confused him about his life. You confused him, Lord. I thank you for bringing truth into his mind, Lord Jesus. Help him, Lord God. Help him right now. Take a couple big breaths. You got to fight them. Fight them and they're in your head. I fight you now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Devils that told him he was an alcoholic. Devils that told him he was a failure. I command you to come out. Devils that told him he was an addict. You are a liar. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind all your power. I bind all your power. You tried to destroy him, but you lost today. He came home to Jesus and repented. Come out of there right now. All the crack cocaine, all the money laundering, all the lying and the cheating. I command you to come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. I break you in the name of Jesus Christ, you thief and liar. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. That self-anger. Come out of there. Sit down. Sit right here. He's ready to go. You got the anointing, sir. Now let it go right now. Do not believe he lied to you. He told you were a loser. He told you were an addict. He, he pulled the rug out from under you 15 times where you relapsed and you wasted everything that you were working hard to build up. He's lying. He can't run the game again. He's defeated at the cross of Calvary. Your faith and trust is in Jesus and his finished work. Come out of there right now, you liar. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come all the way out of there. Come out of there. 
every liar and all that fear that came in through those drugs. Come out right now. It wasn't even fun, you liar. Come out of there. Come out of there. Cocaine addictions. Come out of there right now. Self-hatred and rejection from his adolescence. You come out of there right now. Keep going, sir. What, what were you wanting to get delivered from, sir? Uh, no, just trying to show people, uh, not control them, but show them. Keep wake, fighting them. Wake them up, but not from the wrong place. But what, what do you need to be delivered from? What, like what? That, that's just stepping out in faith, right? Fighting through. You got any spirits? I mean, <laughs> I think those have all come out of me over experiences that I've had uh, recently. Over With deliverance experiences? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Just, um, yeah, we're What's your first name? John. Heavenly Father, Lord, if there's anything in here, Lord, I pray the anointing to be released of the Holy Spirit power upon him for evangelism, for works of miracles. Lord, fill him with the Holy Spirit power. And Lord, show him if there's any rejection, if there's any fear, if there's any lies, if there's any addiction, if there's any lust in there, Lord. Lord, I pray you'd shine your light, Lord, into these dark places where they're hiding. You said when we come in the light, everything will be made visible. Show him, Lord, in Jesus' name. Show him, Lord. Satan, I bind you. You will not hide in the evangelist. You will not hide in the man of God. You will not hide with your lies and your fear. You will not hide in this body. I bind your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Loneliness and depression, self-isolation and confusion, I command you to come out. I command you by the authority of Jesus. You will not hide. You have to come out. You have to come out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for touching his heart, Lord. Making his heart soft, Lord. He had to fight in the streets. Ever since he was a kid, he was fighting. He was scratching for everything, Lord. Nothing came his way easy. Nothing was ever laid up for him on a silver platter. And Lord, that whole thing, that whole life was meant to harden his heart so that he wouldn't love anybody with the love of Christ because he would be reminded of all the hardships which he endured and all the double cross and all the betrayals in which he suffered through the hands of men. So, Lord Jesus, I'm praying you come and soften his heart for your glory. Only you can touch a man's heart. Lord, let him be sensitive to your word. Let him be sensitive to the needs of the people. Soften him, Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord. I can't hum harden my heart anymore, Lord. I can't work for you with this hard heart. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I command all bitterness to come out. I command all bitterness and envy and jealousy, all revenge, I command you to come out. I command all revenge and vengeance to come out in Jesus' name. Get there from your heart. Come on. Come on. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. There he goes. Come out of there. What do you need prayer for, sister? What were you praying for? I'll turn the mic off.
fear, come all the way out. Come all the way out. Fear that she's not even saved. You're a liar. Come out of there right now. Fear. Fear that God won't move in power when she speaks. Come out. Fear of man. I command you to come out. Fear of man. Come out of there right now. Fear of man. In the name of Jesus, Lord, fill her with a boldness. Thank you. Boldness is coming in. Fear has to go in Jesus' name. Any fear, fear that she won't find a husband, fear that she won't raise up as a woman of God to do works and miracles for Christ. Any fear, any fear, I command you to go. Fear, fear, and that no love spirit. When men didn't love her, when men didn't take time to learn who she was, when her father didn't spend time to really get to know her, when she was searching in her heart for truth, and she needed her dad, but he was busy. We forgive him, Lord, and we love him. But this spirit that now moved in to create division between her and her heavenly father, I command it to go. Take another big breath. I command it to go. I command it to go. She is loved by God. Heavenly Father, fill her with the Holy Spirit. Some, this is my fiance. Her okay. Name is Kathy. She's got a history with suicidal ideation. Oh. Uh, that's 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 in her past. She's got. There's a spirit that I've been, that's been uh, been kind of stuck. His name is Sam. I asked if it's name is it Sam. Oh. She also has this thing with a sexual history, and that spirit's name's Marilyn. She's oh. working with these two spirits for a while. Oh. But she's got. She, we're here specifically to deal with those oh. issues. She's got buzzing and ringing in her ears that doesn't go away. She's got. A, she's like. A, she's got that, a, that whole attention-seeking thing in the past, you know, from men throwing out her sex for validation. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm going with this, right? Okay. And, and, and so we're just here to just to get okay, some excellent. because she's dealing with a lot of demonic stuff. And your name's crazy. Kathy? Okay, Heavenly Father, we got Sister Kathy here, Lord. And Lord, your word says that your blood cleanses from all unrighteousness. So Lord, we confess those sins when we walked under the prince of the power of the air, the course of the world, as a son of disobedience, as a daughter of disobedience. We declare they're over. Lord, she has a new life. Kathy has a new life with Christ Jesus. If anyone is in Christ, behold, they become a new creature. The old passes away, and behold, all things become new. So we renounce all these spirits that are even trying to tell their names. I do not receive you. I speak back to you as your symptoms, depression and fear, suicidal thoughts. You did exactly to her what you did to my friend who played football. You built her up, Lord, when she had all the youth and all the elasticity. And then you try to pull the rug out from under her and make her fall. Well, the Lord is raising her up right now through his word and his truth. I bind this lying spirit. I bind the spirit who have made yourself strong. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I declare in Luke 10, 19, we have received power over your power. And we use the power of the name Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit power, to cast out depression. Come out right now, all that harlotry. Come out right now, all that lasciviousness. Come out of there right now, all that selfishness. I command it to come out. Every transfer spirit that came in through men, their sexual encounters with men, all those transfer spirits, I bind your power right now. You're trying to attack her body. You're trying to attack her mind. And I'm commanding you now. I command all that bitterness in her belly to come out. I command you to come out. I command you to come out now. I bind all your power. I separate you one from another, forbidding you to aid and abed one another. You come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Come all the way out. Fear. Fear of demons. Come out right now. Fear of demons. Come out right now. Fear of the devil. Fear of losing my mind. Fear of not feeling better. Come out right now. Fear, come out of there right now. Fear. Fear, come out of there. Keep going. Fear, all those devils that come in from alcohol. Come out. Alcohol effect over the mind. Come out. Alcohol effect over the mind. Come out. All the alcohol effect over the mind. All the effect from drugs that came into the mind. I command you to come out. All those demons that were manifesting, I bind you and command you to come out. I command you to come out the devils that make her feel that she's washed up and no good anymore. You're a liar. Come out right now. Though the outward man is perishing, we are made new daily. Witchcraft, come out right now. Witchcraft destruction over her mind. Come out. Witchcraft destruction over her mind. Come out right now. Witchcraft destruction over her soul. Come out. Come out. Come out. 
You try to tell her she was cursed. I break this curse off her life. I break the curse of failure. I break the curse of discouragement. I break the curse of suicidal thoughts. And I command you to come out. Come out. All the alcohol. All the whiskey. All the drinking. All the wine. All the beer. Come out of there. Alcoholic. Alcoholic spirits in the bloodline. Come out of there. Come out. Anger and self-hatred. All that vengeance spirit. She forgave those people. Come out. Vengeance is the Lord's. He repays. Come out right now. Vengeance towards people who gossiped behind her back. Vengeance towards men that stabbed her in the back and left her high and dry and broke. Come out right now. That vengeance spirits. Come out. Come out of there. Come all the way out. Vengeance. Come out of there right now. You're trying to destroy her. Come out right now. We turn those people over to Jesus and pray for their souls. Come out. I command you to come out. All that bitterness. Bitterness. Come out right now. Bitterness. Bitterness. Come out right now. Hey, Danny, you want to help this lady? Bitterness. Come out of there right now. Bitterness. Come out. We're not playing that religious name or that game with your names, demons. You, your name is Go in Jesus' name. And we're not talking to demons here. We command them to leave in Jesus' name. Alcohol. Alcohol and promiscuity. Come out right now. Mind-binding spirits causing depression and suicidal thoughts. Come out. Come out of the mind. Suicidal thoughts and self-destructive behaviors. Come out of the mind. Come out of the mind. Come out of the mind. Come out. Mind control. I break you off the mind. Mind control. I break you off her mind. Go. Mind control. Come out. Go. Go. Heavenly Father, as Patrick's moving in power and authority, I pray the anointing of discerning of spirits, Lord. I pray that you would open his eyes to discern the spirits, good from evil, false from true. Heavenly Father, thank you for that anointing, Lord, that's on his life and the vision to be able to see when to use it, to see when to step back, to see when to pray, to see when to sow a seed, to see when it's time to heal, to see when it's time to cast out demons. Thank you for that anointing in Jesus' name. Any spirit that came in or transferred that wanted to attack his spiritual gifting because of his ministry position, I bind you right now. Any blinding spirit, I bind you now. You try to attack the leadership in that ministry so that he wouldn't operate in spiritual discernment. And you went before him, before he knew about spiritual warfare. And you subtly try to get in there to steer him into his flesh. And I bind you and I command you to loose, loose right now every devil that blocked him from spiritual discernment. Come out. Every spirit, there he goes, come out. You're blocking him from spiritual discernment to see the false from the true, from the one true God from Kundalini. Come out right now. Come out. Come out of there. You're going to come out now. Come out. Kundalini blockers. Come out right now that mimic God, that tell him what he's doing is biblical. You're lying to him. You don't want him operating in the supernatural power of God. I command that spirit to go. I command that spirit to go. You try to get him frustrated with these men that are knuckleheads. Come out right now. You try to bring him into his flesh. Come out right now. You try to get him to give up on his prayers. I command you to come out now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Come all the way out. 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 She's replacing everything Thank you, Lord. tonight who heard her. Phil, Florent, all these men in her life who have anointing. Her. Thank you for the Lord anointing that Lord breaks God. this yoke. We just release it right Thank now. Thank you for the, the anointing Jesus. power of the Holy right Spirit. Now. We release it right now. Thank you for this anointing power. Thank you for the anointing power. Yeah, that's good. That's Thank good. Thank you They're for leaving. the anointing power. They're leaving. They're leaving. They're leaving. What's your name, sir? Mike. Mike. Okay, Mike, this is how it works. You, you, you're going to grow stronger. This is a lot of knowledge, right? But you got to root him out mentally. If you, rent, root it, you get rid of all his stuff in the mind, whenever you're an addict for years, he gets in there in layers, right? And so you've seen guys that are similar to you. They get to a certain level, and that's when he attacks if they get too high. They can never get too high, or he'll attack. And then they go down here, and he's got a game for them there and there, but it's all built on lies. And he triggers off lies. Sometimes people take their eyes off Christ because they say, hey, things are going good. Hey, I'm, they can't get me anymore, right? I don't want to do that anymore. I'm good. And they put themselves in harm way, harm's way. They get around dangerous people, and they don't discern, right? Well, that's just the infiltration of lies. Paul said in, in people's mind are fortresses of lies. It's like high-rise buildings of cities. That's your job this week is to uproot those lies. 
who you are is who the Bible describes you as. You're a sinner saved by grace through faith. This isn't of yourself, but a gift of God. You are, you are a man of God created for good works. You are in the master's hands being shaped and molded as clay. Right? He's got a, he's got a call on your life. He's going to form you into an image of Jesus Christ. So you've got to get rid of those lies. You get rid of the lies, then when addiction strikes or they try to hit you when you're high, they don't have nothing to stand on. They need a leg to stand on. They need a position to stand on. That's why I threw them all in there starting in at 14 and 15. Everybody that gets into drugs, when I look back to everyone I was smoking pop with at 12, 13, and 14, as I got older, it wasn't always the case, but 12, 13, and 14, it was, and I never thought of it during this time. It was all my friends who had no dads or they had a complete absentee dad who didn't even know what was going on. Every single one. There wasn't one whose dad was in their life. And so the devil came in right in through those gaps, and what did he do? He made us feel like we were the ones having the best time in the world. Man, we were... You, you, how you help them is you get yourself filled with the Holy Ghost and truth. When you come back, like if you're supposed to fight somebody now, man, you ain't ready to get in the ring. You got to start working the, the, the bag. You got to start hitting the speed bag. You got a shadow box. You got to run. So you, you want to love them now and pray for them and set the stage. But you work on yourself. It says by the fruits that you produce, they'll know you. By the love that you have, they'll know you. God makes ways where there is no way. You can't make that way. God has to make that way for you. But he wants you to get rid of those lies in your head first. And you take them captive. You go back. You go. Look, if we could go back in time, we'd be the best stock investors in the world. We'd blow Warren Buffett out of the water. We'd know when to sell. We'd know when to buy. We'd know when to hedge and to short and to put and all those things. Well, here's the advantage. You can look back and see what the devil did to you. Hindsight's 20-20. And you go back when he started lying to me, and I said, I reject that. When I got, I was tired of being bullied in seventh and eighth grade. I got 6'3 and said, nah, I'm dishing this thing out now. Where did that come in? That came in through fear. I didn't want to be that person, so I believed that lie. And pretty soon I became that person. And pretty soon I said, hey, I'm dumb, so I better have money that will overcome my, my ignorance and my inability to retain knowledge. I had to reject all those lies. That was his infrastructure. I was on a road to prove everyone wrong, that I was going to be rich and I was going to have everything they wanted. Based off what? Lies. I can't quit doing what I was doing until I kick out the stool of lies that were supporting that system. You're not rejected. You're not a loser. You're not a failure. You should have been dead. People you know got shot in the head, got stabbed. People's organs just gave out. But God had a call on your life. That's why you don't look like you do drugs. You don't even look like you did drugs because his hand has always been there to help you. That's the truth. And you build yourself up on truth and you just say, that one's a lie. Nope. And I had to whittle them down. It took me a long time. I still whittle a few out. And that's how you get free. They're only standing on lies. And when, when you're believing a bunch of lies, you've got to brace yourself for impact because you don't know where it's coming from because you've been smacked so many times. Pretty soon when you get rid of those lies that props you up on stilts, then pretty soon you fall right back on that foundation, which is Jesus Christ, which sustains you all these days. In Jesus' name, I thank you for the spirit of revelation. Give him eyes to see and ears to hear your word to receive truth and reject lies. Take every thought captive and obedient to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Yo. So we did the miracle of sport came. So oh. what would you uh, help me to help them walk through going forward? Well, there's, right now there's resisting. The Holy Spirit's moving, and he's doing some stuff here, but it's pulling back and forth. So now here's what's happened. You've been to programs before, right? And, and, and you're trusting Patrick because you can see he's genuine, right? So when people are genuine, you do better, you learn faster. But now this is between you and God because me and Patrick ain't in there. I don't know what's going on in there. I had some crazy thoughts, so I'm sure it's, all of us had crazy thoughts. 
I really had crazy thoughts. I really believed I was one of the toughest guys in the world. Right, exactly. self aggrandizing Oh, yes, yes. and I believed it. Yeah. I believe I should have been in the NFL. I believe I could have set all those records without steroids. I believed all kinds of delusions. So the reality is God's got to put us on solid ground to realize we were vulnerable in this world. And without his mercy, we would have been mowed over. And every good thing came from God. Everything I wanted to be good that I did on my own, it always ended up bad. It always ended up hurting somebody else. It always came at somebody else's expense. But I thought they were fun. I thought they were, they were freebies. I thought they were, hey, right place at right time. No, I was doing something that cost somebody. And so those were, those were the stilts that had to be kicked out. And it always took me back to how merciful God really was. Because I believed in his mercy because he did help me not go to jail. He helped me get out of legal situations. He always was giving me mercy, but I didn't understand the depths of mercy. And that when the mercy would take me all the way down to that solid ground of Jesus Christ, which was my foundation, nobody can build on anything other than the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Otherwise, that stuff crashes. So you had Christ, but the reality is you were building up on some stilts on that foundation. So you were falling back on Christ because you got saved, but you were built up in a position on your own and in the flesh and in sin. So those were all lies that we believed, and then we did them. I mean, can you imagine smoking crack? I did it a couple times. I'm going to get high this time. No, you don't. The only high was, you took too long. My, I mean, that is the most flesh-ridden drug on planet Earth. Me. And then once you're high, it's like, anything's expendable for more. Of what? That something that left me empty? Something that never even made me that high? Just was more, more, more? So that's the grandiose delusion drug. That methamphetamines, at least when you're doing heroin, you know things are bad because you're slumped over sideways and your back hurts all the time because you slept like, you stood like this for two hours. But meth and crack are these great grandiose delusion drugs, right? And he just fires lies in there. And if enough throw it in there without any type of rejection, some start sticking, right? So that's where you're going to get rid of these lies. And you got to be honest with yourself. How many times you say, this is the last time? This is it. This 300, I'm done. Lord, this is the last time. Yeah. So it was all this, it was all this stuff that was, it was worthless. It was, it was stubble. Well, it was all, well, that's, it's in your mind, right? It's in your mind. But you didn't know it was all demons. Now you know it's all demons. And they're playing a video reel in your mind. You can get rid of the whole video reels. I can't remember one image of a porn. I can't remember a porn scene. I can't remember nothing. I can remember Farrah Fawcett in that red uh, one-piece bathing suit. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. I got rid of the pornography. By the what? By the power of God when I knew it was lies. When I had to go back and retrain my, wife, my life, it said let your breast satisfy all the days of your life. That means you're, you're, we're up here and then after three kids of breastfeeding, they sag a little bit. But if they're mine, that's all I got, and they're the best. And it says, make your wife the apple of your eye. You treat her precious. She's valuable to you. I had to renew my mind, and I had to retrain it, and I had to take every bit of infiltration, and I had to say, nah, I ain't believing that. That's lies. It takes you a while. It's like a whittler who's got a block of wood. He ain't got a little, like Duck Dynasty. They can't get no duck, you know, decoys out of a block of wood for a while of whittling, right? You're going to whittle this thing down. And keep giving yourself grace. You're saved by grace through faith. This isn't of yourself. It's not you're saved by grace and then whatever else you can do, that's Mormonism. You're saved by grace through faith and that's it. And so you trust in him. If he saved you through his own power and through his own will, through his own authority, then he's going to help you through his own will, through his own power, and through his authority. He does it. <laughs> yeah, that's where they were baiting us in. That was like the fly fishermen throwing stuff over our eyes. Yep. Okay. God bless. See you soon. Appreciate you, bro. Have a good one. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Heal those broken legs and hips.
Thank you, Jesus. Hey, God bless you, bro. Good to see you. Lord, I thank you for my friend's health. He's stronger, Lord. His shoulders got stronger. His legs got stronger, Lord. He used to be on that oxygen pack. Lord, I thank you that, he, that Lord, you would return his joy to him. Lord, he used to have some fun times going fishing. He used to have some fun times walking in the grass. He used to have a fun time doing some things as a kid. Lord, I pray you to restore that joy. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. I pray healing power would come into his body, give him vitality and energy. Lord, I pray he'd get out and enjoy some things. Lord, I pray you'd send some friends his way. I pray that he'd open up and he'd learn and he'd share. And Lord, I bless him in Jesus' name. I declare the devil's defeated. You gave him life and that's it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, sir, can you sit down right here? You, you've been here before, right? You can't, you've been here before? Or is this your first time? You, is this your first time here? Yeah? What, what, what's going on? What, what, when did things shift for you? Like things were going good at one point in your life and then they shifted? Can you recall anything or is everything going good? How old are you now? 25? You're 22? How was it in high school? Did you, you went to, where are you from? From Phoenix? From Arizona? I was born in Tennessee. You went to high school in Tennessee? No. Oh, oh, excellent. So, so what was happening in high school? Were, you, were, you, were things going pretty good in high school? Or were some troubles back then too? Yeah, when, when did it first start? We're going all the way back to when? Junior high, elementary school, from when you were a wee little kid? Mom, what's going on? They, 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 what, fill us in. You have a listening problem? Oh. Oh. Um, there was a demonic presence, I believe, in the spirit of the building, the spirit of the Leviathan. Okay. Charles was using He is said on numerous occasions that he is God, that he is Jesus. Oh. Um, that the Bible is not real. When did all this start? Um, when the first time you. He was completely normal in high school and all that was going good. He had friends. So you started smoking weed or what? What were you popping pills or weed? Both? Okay. Um, have you ever had any encounters with Jesus Christ? Were you, were you, was he raised in the church? Did you have any encounters with Jesus when you were little? Did he ever talk to you? No, never. You just, when mom brought you to church, you just thought it was a decent place to get some good values? You, you never had the Lord talk to you or touch your heart? Never when you were a little kid, five, six, seven, eight years old, running around the church, preacher preaching, people praying for you. Has he ever told you when he was little about encounters with Jesus? Was he ever excited about the Lord at one point? What is your first name? What's your first name? What's your first name? Emmanuel? 
see, th this is what happened, Emmanuel, is when you come from a praying mother and family, right, and you're in the house of God, he, he saw that you were going to be a handsome dude. He saw you were going to be a person of influence. And he, he wages a war on people that he can take out. He saw something. He saw you as a little kid praying, kneeling to God, asking God to do something in you or for you, and he didn't like it. And so since he's a masterful deceiver, what he tried to do is he tried to put some people in your way. It's called the, the weeds. And the weeds grow up around the fruit, and it choke it, and it becomes unfruitful. That was their, that was their deal. And that's where they, they, they got the drugs in there. I started smoking marijuana when I was either 12 or 13. I can't remember. And uh, I remember the first time I did it, I had fear. And everyone said, hey, man, don't worry about that. Keep smoking and that fear will go away. So fear comes in through drugs. And think about it. If you're a healthy man, 22 years old, in good shape with love and mom, right? What in the world would, would that wouldn't be you to say, hey, I want to die by suicide by cop. That wouldn't be you. What happens is something came into you and it wanted to rip off all your destiny and it wanted to take the soundness of your mind. He's real. Do you think it's just you and you're just tired of this earth? I mean, talk to me. We ain't got to talk all night. I mean, you tell me what's going on and we'll, we'll, we'll know what's happening and we'll go our ways, right? We'll deal with what we can deal with. It. You don't like this life? And you're lonely even if you're around people, you feel alone? What, what happens when you ask the Lord to talk to you? Do you ask him to help you, comfort you? When was the last time you asked him to help you? Yeah, we can ask him to help you right now, but when's the last time you did it before? Like you said, you can't deal with the loneliness. When was the last time that you asked him to come to you so you wouldn't be lonely? So he said, he says, behold, I'm with you to the very end, that he would never leave us and he would never forsake us, and that the Holy Spirit is the comforter, that he comforts us in our trials and tribulations, he comforts us in our time of weakness. Had you been doing it in the last few years? Asking the Lord Jesus to comfort you and to spend time with you? So you got to realize a couple things, right? 